friends, I am Shohum Bera, Senior Consultant Optometrist from India. Today I am going to tell you about eye floaters, flashes and spots. Let's start it with. Eye floaters are those tiny spots, specks, flakes and cowhips that drifts aimlessly around in your field of vision. While annoying, ordinary eye floaters and spots are very common and usually aren't cause any harm. Floaters and spots typically appear when tiny pieces of the eye gel-like vitreous break loose within the inner back portion of the eye. When we are born and throughout our youth, the vitreous has a gel-like consistency. But as we age, the vitreous begins to dissolve and liquefy to create a watery center. Some dissolved gel particles occasionally will float around in the more liquid center of the vitreous. This particle can take to many shapes and sides to become what we refer to as eye floaters. You will notice that these spots and eye floaters are particularly pronounced if you gaze at a clear or overcast sky or a computer screen with a white or light colored background. You wouldn't actually be able to see tiny bits or debris floating loose within your eyes. Instead, shadow from these floaters are cast on the retina as light passes through the eye and those tiny shadows are what you, you see. You will also notice that these specks never seems to stay still when you try to focus on them. Floaters and spots move them move when your eye and the vitreous gel inside the eye moves, creating the impression that they are drifting. When are eye floaters and flashes are medical emergencies? So noticing a few floaters from time to time it is not a cause of for concern. However, if you see a shower of floaters and spots, especially if they are accompanied by flashes or light, you should seek medical attention immediately for an eye care professional. The sudden appearance of these symptoms could mean that the vitreous is pulling away from your retina, a condition called posterior vitreous detachment, or it could mean that the retina itself is becoming dislodged from the back of eye back of the eyes inner lining, which contains blood, nutrients and oxygen vital to healthy function. As the vitreous gel tugs on the delicate retina, it might cause a small tear or a hole in it. When the retina is torn, vitreous can enter the opening and push the retina further away from the inner lining of the back of the eye, leading to a retinal detachment. A recent study published in ophthalmology showed that among people who experience the sudden symptoms of eye floaters or flashes of light, 39.7% had a posture vitreous detachment and 8.9% had a torn in retina. Other research has shown that up to 50% of these people with a retinal tear will subsequently develop a detachment of the retina, which could lead to significant vision loss and can cause blindness. In cause of retinal tear or detachment, treatment must occur as soon as possible so that an eye surgeon or ophthalmologist can act reattach the retina and restore function before vision is lost permanently. Posterior vitreous detachment PVDs are far more common than retinal detachments and often are not an emergency even when floaters appear suddenly. Some vitreous detachment also can damage the retina by tugging on it, leading to a tear of detachment. Light flashes known as photopsia can occur when your retina receives non-visual or mechanical stimulation which can happen when it is being tugged, torn or detached. These light flashes may appear as lighting bolts, flickering lights or random specks. What cause eye floaters and pores? As mentioned above, posterior vitreous detachment are common cause of vitreous floaters. Far less common, these symptoms can be associated with retinal tears or detachment that may be linked to PVDs. 
what leads to vitreous detachment in the first place? As the eye develops, the vitreous gel films the inside of the dark of the back of the eye and presses against the retina and attaches to the surface of the retina. Over time, the vitreous become more liquefied in the center. Thus, this sometimes means that the central more watery vitreous cannot support the weight of the heavier, more peripheral vitreous gel. The peripheral vitreous gel then collapses into the central liquefied vitreous detaching from the retina like jello separating from the inside of a gelatin mold or dough. Eye photos resulting from a posterior vitreous detachment are then concerned in the more liquid vitreous found in the interior center of the eye. It is estimated that more than half of all people will have a posterior vitreous detachment by age 80. Thankfully, most of these PVDs not lead to torn or detached retina. Light flashes during this process means the, that traction is being applied to your retina while the PVD takes place. Once the vitreous finally detached and presence and pressure on the retina is eased, the light flashes should gradually subside. Now, what causes eye flashes? Ordinarily, light entering your eye stimulates the retina. This procedure, an electrical impulse which the optic nerve transmits to the brain, the brain then, in, then interprets this impulse as light or some type, or type of image. If the retina is mechanically stimulated, physically touched or tugged, a similar electric impulse is seen to the brain. This impulse is that interpreted as a figure or light. When the retina is tugged, or torn or detached from the back of the eye, a flash of figures of light commonly is noticed. Depending on the extent of the traction, tear or detachment, these flashes or light might be short-lived or continue indefinitely until the retina is impaired. Flashes or photopsia also may occur after a blow to the head that is capable of shaking the vitreous gel inside the eye. When this occurs, the phenomenon sometimes is called seeing stars. Some people experience flashes of light that appears as jet light or heat wave in both eyes, often lasting 10 to 20 minutes. These type of flashes are usually caused by a spasm of blood vessels in the brain. If a headache follows, if a headache follows the flashes, it is called a migraine headache. However, jack line or heat waves can occur without a headache. In this case, the light flashes are called ophthalmic migraine or migraine without a headache. Photopsia also can be symptoms of digital toxicity which can occur particularly in the older people who take digitalis or related drugs for heart problem. Other condition associated with eye photos and flashes, when a PVD is accompanied by bleeding inside the eye vitreous hemorrhage it means the traction that occurs may have torn a small blood vessels in the retina a vitreous hemorrhage increases the possibility of a retinal tear or detachment traction extent on the retina during a pvd also can lead to development of conditions such as macular rings, macular holes vitreous detachment with accompanying eye filters also may occur in circumstances such as inflammation in the inner eye interiors, nearsightedness, cataract surgery, ear laser, eye surgery, diabetes or diabetic vitreopathy, CMV retinitis. Inflammation association with many conditions such as eye infection can cause the vitreous to liquefy leading to a PVD. When you are nearsighted, your eye elongated shape also can increase the likelihood of a PVD and accompany traction on the retina. In fact, nearsighted people are more likely to have PVDs at a younger age. PVDs are very common following cataract surgery and follow a procedure called a ear laser capsule tool. Months or even after cataract surgery, it is not useful for the thin membrane or capsule that left intact behind the intraocular lens to become cloudy, affecting vision. This 
the delayed cataract surgery complication is called posterior capsular opacification posterior capsular opacification or PCO. In this capsulotomy procedure is to treat PCO, a special type of laser focused energy onto the cloudy capsule, vaporizing the central portion of, of it to create a clear path for light to reach the retina with restored clear vision. Manipulation of the eye during cataract surgery and ear laser capsule to be procedure cause attraction that can lead to posterior vitreous detachment. Now, how to get rid of eye floaters? Most eye floaters and spots are harmless and merely annoying. Many will fade over time and become less bothersome. In most cases, no eye floaters treatment is required. However, large persistent floaters can be very bothersome to some people causing them to seek a way to get rid of eye photos and spores drifting in their field of view. In the past, the only treatment for eye photos was an invasive surgical procedure called a vitreotomy. In this procedure, some of all the vitreous is removed from the eye along with the eye photos within it and is replaced with a sterile clear field. But the risk of vitrectomy usually outweighed the benefit for eye photos treatment. The risk includes surgically induced retinal detachment and serious eye infection. On rare occasion, vitrectomy surgery can cause new or even more floaters. For this reason, most eye surgeons do not recommend vitrectomy to treat eye floaters and spots. Now, laser treatment for floaters. Recently, a laser procedure called laser vitreolysis has been introduced that is a much safer alternative to vitrectomy for eye photos treatment. In this, in office procedure, a laser beam is projected into the eye through the pupil and is focused on large photos which breaks them apart and all frequent vaporize them so they disappear or become much less bothersome. To determine if you can benefit from laser vitreolysis to get rid of eye photos, your eye specialist, eye specialist will consider several factors including your age, how quickly your symptoms started, what your photos looks like and where they are located. The photos in patients younger than age 45 tend to be located too close to the retina and cannot be safely treated with laser vitreolysis. Patients with sizable eye photos located farther away from the retina are better suited to the procedure. The ophthalmologist who perform laser vitreolysis also will evaluate the shape and border of your eye photos. Those with soft borders often can be treated successfully. Likewise, sizable photos that appear suddenly as a result of a posterior vitreous detachment often can be successfully treated with a laser procedure. What happened during laser treatment? Laser vitreolysis usually is pain free and can be performed in your ophthalmologist office or in a eye hospital. Just prior to the treatment, anesthetic eye drops are applied and a special type of contact lens is placed on the eye. Then the doc consultant will look through a biomicroscope or slit lamp to precisely deliver the laser energy to the photos being treated. During this procedure, you might notice dark spots. These are pieces of broken up floaters. The treatment can take up to a half hour, but it is usually significantly shorter. At the end of the procedure, the contact lens is removed, your eye is rinsed with saline and dark. Eye specialist will apply an anti-inflammatory eye drop. Additionally, eye drops may be prescribed for you to use at a home. Sometimes you may see small dark spots shortly after this treatment. These are small gas bubbles that tends to resolve quickly. There also is a chance that you will have some mild discomfort, redness, or blurry vision immediately after this procedure. These effects are more are common and typically wouldn't prevent you from, result, from returning to your normal activities immediate, immediately following laser vitreolysis. Your eye specialist will usually schedule follow-up the following day at that time you may need a second treatment.
if you are bothered by a large persistent eye protrus, ask your eye specialist if laser vitrolysis must be good treatment option for your situation. Remember, a sudden appearance of a significant number of eye protrus, especially if they are accompanied by flashes, light or other vision disturbance could indicate a detached retina or other serious problem in the eye. If you suddenly see new photos, visit your eye specialist as quick as possible. So friends, this is all about eye photos and faces. If you like our video, please like us, share us and subscribe to us. Please stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.